okay, now let's say you're willing to go all the way. Let's say you're like, hey, Ryan, I want to make videos that look like yours. That looks pretty good. How do I, how do, I do that? Well, if you're willing to splurge, let me first list all the equipment that I'm using. So here are the seven or eight important ingredients to making videos like this. You need a camera, you need a lens to go with that camera, you need a microphone, that's what we have here, you need a computer, of course, you need an audio interface, so that's what the microphone will plug into, so that's the in-between for the computer and the microphone. You need to use some sort of video editing software, so that's the post-production piece of the puzzle. I have the lighting rig that I mentioned, and then some sort of interesting background. So here I have some some neon. It took me forever to decide what the neon was going to say. Well, I teach philosophy classes, so I thought ask questions was appropriate. Let's start off with my camera. So I'm using a Sony ZV-E10. It's a mirrorless camera, the mirrorless blog camera. It shoots in 4K, so that's what you're looking at now. And the lens that I'm using with it is the Sigma 16 millimeter F 1.4 DCDN. So people who are experts in this field, you'll know exactly what those specifications mean. I do not. The microphone that I'm using, it's a condenser mic. And so when I started to learn about microphones, there's so many different types, of course. There are condenser mics and there are dynamic microphones. So this is a condenser mic. And the condenser mics, they pick up more of the ambient noise. So if you're in a noisy spot, this might not be the one for you. And, and where I'm at, I'm just at home, it's, it's, for, the, it's for the most part uh, uh, pretty quiet. And um, you know, I don't have any sound treatment anywhere. So if you don't know what the heck that is, that's like if you put foam stuff on the wall or you know, like a bunch of carpets on the floor. So sometimes, sometimes rooms can be real, really echoey. What's really bad for sound is echoes. And you get a lot of echoes if, they're, if you're just like in a huge room that was just like a giant cube, like a cathedral that was a cube, and all the surfaces are very flat and very hard, then sound would be bouncing around left and right. But the, the room that I'm in, um, the walls are kind of at different angles. Like the ceiling is sort of angled, so there's carpet below me, and uh, there's lots of things in the room, and so there's the, the sound waves, they don't, they don't bounce around as, as much. But the disadvantage of many condenser mics is that they can pick up ambient noise, you know? So if the fan in your computer is really loud, or there's a refrigerator that's not far from me, and sometimes the fan on that, uh, this does a good job of not picking up that, so it's not terribly bad, and it depends on how you adjust the settings. But I think it sounds better, so I think the, the S's and the C's are just a little bit more crisp, so I just like, I like the sound of it. I think it's a little bit more pleasing to the ear. So the other main kind of mic are dynamic mics. So those ones, you really have to be up on them to, to hear, and if you zoom, if and if you get away from them, so I'm, I'm, I'm not on a condenser mic, but I'm trying to, to mirror how that would be. You know, if you're not right up on them, then you can barely hear what the person is saying and it doesn't pick them up as much. A lot of podcasts use condenser mics because, you know, that helps to ensure that you're not picking up anything else around, around the room. There's this industry standard mic, this Shure SM7B. Shure SM7B. If you just do a random search for podcasts, don't be surprised if more than half of them had this microphone. And I actually got it before this one, but it was just, it does a great job of not picking up the ambient sound, but it just was too, too quiet. And I had to be really right up on it. And I just didn't think that it sounded as good. So that's a little bit of personal preference. And then there are some things you can do to boost the game to boost the gain to make sure that you're getting the right signal. So that's microphones. So computer, what computer am I using? Right at the beginning of COVID, I actually got a new MacBook Air. So that's not a particularly powerful computer. So it was like a 2020 MacBook Air. So it wasn't a PC. 
and um, it did a it did a fine job. But for if you're gonna splurge to do the video editing, my computer was really really slow down. So recently I upgraded to the latest model of MacBook Air. If you've been aware of the evolution of chip technology for the Apple computers, they have these M chips, the M1, and right now uh, the computer I'm on has the M2. And even though you know it's not it's not a professional laptop and it's not a desktop computer, it still has plenty of power to do the sort of video editing that I'm doing. So I'd recommend it or a comparable PC. Now, what's in between this microphone and my computer? Well, the go-between is called an audio interface, and the one that I'm using is the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 USB audio interface. Essentially, there's an XLR cable, a microphone cable, that connects the microphone to the audio interface, and then there's a USB cable that comes out of the audio interface and then goes into my computer so I can use it to adjust all the levels so I can crank down the microphone so now it's nice and small and then I can crank it up until it's almost too loud it's too loud it's clipping it's clipping and so we'll go back to that nice level that I had before all right video editing software so I was like many of you I didn't know how to use any of this stuff you know maybe I'd done a little bit of stuff in iMovie you know I guess now people are editing on their phones and their iPads but I was a complete novice at this sort of stuff. And so over the past year, mostly through YouTube videos, I learned how to use Adobe Premiere Pro. And so I would recommend it. So most people that make videos like these, they use one of three different video editing softwares. They'll use Adobe Premiere, they'll use Final Cut Pro, which is native to Apple computers, or they'll use DaVinci Resolve. What's nice about these video editing softwares is that there's a simplified version of them. So for Adobe, there's a software called Adobe Rush. So you can't do all the detailed things that you would do in Adobe Premiere. But for basic videos, it has everything that you need. And as an alternative to Final Cut Pro, a lot of people would just use iMovie, which is the video editing software that comes built into Macs. Okay, let's talk a little bit about post-production. So you might notice that there is music behind me. I think it makes them that much easier to listen to and that much more professional looking and sounding. And while I was tempted to make my own music for these videos, I decided to go, I searched the web for royalty-free music. That way you don't have to worry about any copyright issues. And so the website that I found is called epidemicsound.com. And so you can just browse through tracks and find ones that you think that have the right tone or the right vibe for your instructional content. But like I said before, if you don't have a standalone microphone, then you're recording audio and video to the same file. And the advantage of that is you don't have to do any editing. It's all in one place. The advantage of recording the audio separately is you can tweak it independently of the video. And so I just do that in GarageBand, but there are plenty of other DAWs, digital audio workstations that you can use like Logic or Pro Tools or FL Studios, Fruity Loops Studios. So you can get better audio with a standalone microphone, but then you have to do the sort of annoying thing. You have to sync the audio to the video. So you're essentially, this is all digital, right? So you are recording a digital video, you are recording digital audio, and those are two different files or two different tracks. And then in your video editing software, you're going to open or drag those tracks into the software, and then you have to match them up. 
So often what I'll do is I'll do a little clap at the beginning of my video that I eventually edit out. But that way there is a visual cue that goes along with a distinct audio cue and then use that to, to sync them up. It's kind of a pain, but once you get used to it, it's not too bad. So in the software, you're gonna have all of these layers. So you're gonna have the video layer, then you're gonna have the audio layer, and then you're gonna have the, the music layer, and then you want to adjust the levels so that the music's not too loud and not too distracting. You might have noticed in some of my videos, I have a, a little quick title animation that says something like philosophy with Ryan or philosophy with Dr. Sherbart. Those are kind of neat. They kind of grab people's attentions, make the video seem a little bit more professional. So if you're going to upload your videos to YouTube, then having the right thumbnail can be important. I actually found some good templates on a website called PicMaker, PicMaker.com. Some of them are free, some of them are not. And then also, if you're uploading your videos to YouTube, it's nice if you break them up into chapters. A lot of my videos end up being 30 or 40 minutes long, and it's, and it's nice to put them into smaller, more digestible chunks of, you know, one, one, to five, one to five minutes. And so the way that you do it is in the description of the video, you just put little timestamps. So, so if you want the first 59 seconds to be a chapter, then you would put zero colon zero zero. So that's a timestamp at the beginning of the video, and then you space and then, and then title it anything that you want, and then on a new line put, say zero colon 59. So that's the 59 second mark. Then that would begin the next chapter, which you could call um, whatever you want it to be. So again, I am by no means an expert. I am new to this stuff. Just a little less new to it than you are. I hope that was pretty helpful. That was pretty fun sharing these things with all of you. Thanks for hanging out with me.